Today I'll be sharing with you how to can an old-fashioned applesauce. Now this is part of March Canning Madness, so I'll give a little uh, prelude to that, and then we'll get right into canning. Thank you for joining me today. Welcome to my channel today. Well, this is this week's March Canning Madness video. I jumped in a little late, but I have never been so welcomed in any collab that I've worked with, I'm going to say that Constance from Cosmopolitan Cornbread has the most welcoming uh, viewers and followers of any collab I've ever done. Not only did uh, Constance welcome me to the collab, she also had many, many followers and many uh, subscribers that welcomed me and appreciated the video that I did for my first March Canning Madness video. Now, I did a video on how to can pomegranate uh, jelly, how to make pomegranate jelly. And I, I did not know until after I made that video that Constance also had done that video. But when I, uh, after I filmed my video and I looked for it in search, I noticed that Constance's video was the first one in search if you search how to make pomegranate jelly. And so that's wonderful to know. I just thought I'd share that with you. I wanted to let you know how welcomed I felt and how much I've so far enjoyed this challenge. I've done many challenges and this is one of the best I've ever done. She opened it to everyone, made it as easy as it possibly could be, and it's been a real pleasure to be part of it. Well, this is my second weekend. Second week in the challenge. I jumped in a little late. I might try to get an extra video in just to uh, equal it all out if I can do that. There's a lot going on around here. Well, last year we went to the orchard and we bought apples. And here is what is remaining. I think we got seven bushel of apples. And here we've probably got one bushel left, I would say. It's probably one bushel here, maybe a little bit more. So we've uh, had eight, six bushels of apples this um, fall and winter. I got these last fall. We went to the orchard and we bought these freshly picked. In fact, they were picked that day. And I had them in cool storage, storing them as best that I could. And so here is what's left. Now I'm going to go ahead and make something simple out of these. I'm going to take this uh, smallest little bucket on in, little basket, and we're going to make some applesauce. I have brought them in here to the sink and I'm just going to go ahead and wash them. Now these apples would not be real crisp and crunchy, but they're still good and firm and you can tell that they kept really well. Now this is not my normal time. I'm just washing them with some fruit and vegetable wash. This is not the time of the year that I would normally be canning a lot of things. I can the most whenever my garden is producing, whenever the farms and the farmer's markets around me are offering uh, the labors, the, the vegetables and fruits and everything from their labors. And when I go to the um, orchards to pick, that's when I do most of my canning. But as you can see, I have a lot here that I can can that'll keep me from wasting anything. We've ate a lot of these apples. There's just a little bit here left. I'm going to wash these things up. I'm going to get them good and clean. And then I'm just going to put them over here in this pan, in this pot. And I'm going to cook them down. And we're going to make applesauce just as simple as it possibly can be. Now, I've put about two quarts of water in here. And I put, I'm going to put a cup of lemon juice in this big pot. And that's going to be in my applesauce. Now, I can do these apples two ways. One of two ways. I can take time to peel and core these apples. Or I can just go ahead and put these apples in whole. So I can do this one of two ways. I think I'm just going to go ahead and put them in whole. And if I cook them whole, then I'll have to put them through a sieve before I can can them. And that's okay too. Now I have my uh, pot full of apples. They're looking beautiful in here. I did have to go through a few if I found any kind of spots on them. I've just cut those spots off. 
so that there wouldn't be any kind of uh, undesirable thing in here in the uh, in our applesauce and I've got the two quarts of water in the cup of lemon juice down at the bottom I've put these in I've got my my burner on high and I'm just gonna cook these down I'm just gonna cook them till they get real soft and they get kind of mushy and then what I'll do after that is run through the food meal this is a little thing that you can put your apples in and you uh, roll, pull, pull this around, you hold this handle and with the other hand you twist this and it'll get uh, keep your seeds, your peels, stems and cores and things in here and I, I, can, I can use that or I can use this big one. I've used both of them. This big one I'll just put over a big bowl or a pot. I will put my apples in here and then I'll just use I'll just use a pouncer or, or this thing right here and I'll just grind the apples and it'll go through this. We call them sieves. I don't know why I call them that. That's what we called them growing up. And I guess they're colanders or uh, strainers maybe. Just strainers. But we called them sieves. So I'll probably use this big one because it'll allow me to do more. And then when I get down a little bit, I'll probably use that little one. But I'm just going to start going ahead and getting these uh, cooking and getting them boiled down. I'm not sure how long it'll take. I'll look at the clock and kind of estimate the time for you. Now that took about a peck of apples. So it took about half of this um, half bushel of apples to fill up that pot. So maybe a little more than a half of uh a little more than a peck. This is about a peck that I've got left in here. These are half bushel baskets. Well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, wash these up and they'll be ready to go for the next batch. As I've had these apples in storage, I go through them periodically and make sure I get, get out any bad apples. Any apples that's, you know, more than half rotten or starting to rot and then have places on them, I go ahead and get them out of the apple storage bin because... They'll rot your whole, your whole bunch of apples. You got to be sure you kind of keep your um, rotten apples picked out if you're going to keep apples for a long time. It's true that old saying: one bad apple will will ruin the whole bunch. That's a true saying when it comes to storing apples. I have a friend on that uh, watches me on YouTube, and she knows my kitchen in real life. And she says, "Donna, your kitchen looks so much bigger on videos." But I trust. Trust me, rest assured, this is a tiny, tiny little kitchen space. But that hasn't stopped me from doing a lot of things in this tiny space. Sometimes canning can seem like it takes up a lot of, a lot of space because you have to use really big pots and you have to have um, bowls and storage and jars and things, but it's well worth it. Now, I'm from the Appalachian Mountains, and my husband, he's from... He's also from the Appalachian Mountains. He just was a little lower in a different area. Now, they farmed. His, his family were farmers, and they canned religiously. My family were orchard um, pickers. They were, they just kind of moved from house to house. I've told this story, you know, these story many times on my videos about our uh, background and growing up. My mom's family, she had 10, there were 10 of them, 10 children. And their family moved from house to house and they picked seasonal produce in the mountains. That means they picked plums, cherries, peaches, apples, mainly apples. They picked a lot of apples. And that was their job. That's, that's what their parents did for years and years. Of course, they branched out and got other jobs. They needed more money. But basically, that's for the majority of their life, that's what they did. They picked orchards. And so... It has a sentimental place to me in my, you know, my upbringing. There were a lot of different kinds of storage methods. Cannon was certainly one of them, but they dried a lot of apples, and they um, stored them just like we did, like I did in cold storage. You know, Mama said they would even store some apples out under the trees and cover them by leaves. Of course, there was some natural apples left out there from where they fell, they would cover them with leaves, but they would also store them out there because, you know, 
they didn't have big freezers and refrigerators. They had just really small houses and sometimes their houses didn't have electricity. I made a video on that about my Appalachian mother. She's someone that uh, lived off grid before it was cool. It was just a way of life for them in the mountains. So they stored these apples in different ways and they, they canned, when they canned, they canned them on a wood stove. So today I'm making applesauce and there's several reasons I wanna make this applesauce. You know, applesauce is an excellent substitution for these kind of oils. These, uh, this is canola oil, but their applesauce you can actually substitute for these kind of oils in making cakes and different recipes. So that's one thing I want to can a lot of applesauce for is so that I can use my um, applesauce as a substitute in my recipes that call for this kind of oil. Cupcakes and things that I make for the kids, muffins and different things. I would like to substitute and use applesauce instead of oil. That's a great, great thing to cut out some things if you're wanting to cut some things out of your diet. I think these are omega-6s. Not quite as healthy for you as other, other forms of omega. You know, you want to have omega in your diet. Omega-3, I think, is an excellent source. But I want to cut out these oils as much as I possibly can. So I'm going to use applesauce as an oil substitute, and that's one of the reasons I want to make more applesauce. I have quite a bit on hand, but we've also used a lot of it. So when I make this applesauce and can it, I can use it in that manner. I also have six grandchildren. If you watch my channel, you know I have six grandchildren that all stay with me off and on during different times of the year. Summer comes, they'll be here more often. So I want to be able to have um, applesauce on hand for them. It's an excellent snack, especially served cold in the summer. It's a really refreshing, healthy snack for them. So I want to have applesauce on hand for that reason too. So I'll be canning applesauce today, and I've probably canned applesauce probably since I was six years old, not by myself because I couldn't even lift the canners, but with family. So canning is no new thing to me. It certainly can be a way of life. It certainly was a, a way of life for me and my husband. In fact, my husband, when he was growing up, there was a point in their life where they canned, fished, hunted, and were solely responsible for at least 90% of their food. Everything they ate, they either raised, hunted, gathered, canned, gardened, so he certainly is familiar with canning. So that is is a, a way of life for him. There's not much that we can't can. There's a lot of basics to canning. And I've been thinking about doing a basics to canning video. Just to maybe encourage somebody that wants to get started. Or maybe just to um, refresh anybody that needs it. I think I'm going to do a back to basics canning video. There's a lot of different opinions on canning. There are people that can different ways. I know the Mennonites can different than we do. There are just uh, different varying methods to some things. And, um, of course, you know, depending on your train of thought on canning, there's a lot of, um, a lot of advice and different things out here. Since I grew up in it, I didn't have to worry about that. Everybody I knew canned and preserved food, and I don't, I've, I never heard of anybody that did, died from their canned food or got even got sick. I've never heard of not one person in my whole life growing up that ever got sick from canned food. So it can be done, and it can be done right, and it is a worthwhile skill to have. It's a great skill to learn to process and save a lot of food. It'll prevent a lot of food waste and it'll, it'll make some delicious uh, things in a jar that you can open all different times, like a can of peaches. There is nothing in the world like a can of peaches that you open in the dead of winter. It is like summer in a jar. A can of peaches that you pop open and uh, make a recipe out of or just eat them, just eat them out of the jar. They are delicious, and it will bring you back to your summer days if you're in the dead of winter. So, of course, I have to share the whole 
um, excitement of canning and putting away things that you solely like and that you love to eat and that you know what's in the jar. And uh, this is a wonderful opportunity to share all that. Of course, I'm waiting on my apples to boil. We're going to stir them up here. And then we're going to get these cooked up, and I'll show you the next step. They're starting to boil, and you can see they're getting soft in here. And that's exactly what we wanted. I did add a little bit more water to speed the process up a little bit, but that's okay. We're just going to cook these down a little bit, make sure all of these get good and soft. And you can add apple salt, I mean uh, cinnamon and stuff like that to your applesauce when you're cooking it. I don't do that. I just make plain applesauce and then we'll add anything to it uh, after we open it. If somebody wants cinnamon added, then we'll add it as we... As we open it and prepare it to eat. And of course, I leave it plain for the reason I told you that I want to use it as an oil substitute. And plain is best if you're going to do that. You might be adding it to some cake or cupcakes that you do not want. Cinnamon or, or something like that added to it. So we're just going to continue to boil these until they all soften. As the applesauce cooks down, you can see... how the apples get really, really soft. And when you press them, you can see how soft they, you see under the peeling that there's uh, some pinkness there. There's some Arkansas black uh, apples in here. And so they're, they're real dark peelings. And so what that does is it lends some really um, beautiful color, some kind of pink color to your applesauce. Now they're not all dark apples, so they, it won't be really pink, but you can see right there the applesauce being just really getting some color and nutrients out from under the skins of those apples. So we're just going to continue to boil this until these apples soften up, until we can put them through our sieve and just collect our applesauce. I went ahead as the apples uh, cooked down, added the rest of the apples that I had in that little basket. I added it to this pot. You know, I got my pot just about as full as it can be. We're just going to continue to cook these down until they're ready to run through the sieve. Now I've got this big pot. Here's our applesauce. It's cooked down. It's cooled off a little bit so that it's managed as a handle. And I'm going to move it over here beside the sink where I have placed a stainless steel pot here down in the bottom, a clean stainless steel pot. I am going to dip this applesauce with peels, cores, everything. You know, we cook the whole apples in here. I am now going to put it through a process of straining out anything that's undesirable. Now we've got this strainer that I can use right here or this bigger one that I can use and just use something to press it down through. I want to try with this bigger one to see if I can get more done this morning. So I'm just going to set it right down in here. I've already washed it. And I'm just going to scoop out the applesauce and it's kind of pink applesauce I think if I use this method, it'll move a little faster than the than the small little uh, strainer that I've got over here, this one here. I think this process will move faster with me just putting it down in here like this. Now I can use a couple of different tools. I can use this, which I would just stick in here and roll around and that'll help press the applesauce down through 
this big uh, seed. Now I could have saved this step by just peeling and coring the apples uh, in the beginning. If I had done that, then I wouldn't be having to do the straining step. But I decided just to go ahead and cook the whole apple to get everything up under the uh, skins of the apples, all the nutrients and the color. You can see this applesauce is going to be a pink color because of the color and everything that's up under the peeling. So this is going to take just a little bit. This is going to take a little bit to move this around down in here. If you don't have a big pouncer like this, a wooden pouncer, you can just use a wooden spoon. I've got a big wooden spoon right here. And you can just press down so that applesauce goes down through those holes. Now this... This strainer maybe have holes that's too small for me to get all this through. It may take a little while to work this down through here. Of course, the liquid part of the sauce goes down first, and then you have to kind of work, work, work to get the sauce down through those holes. But I'm going to work with that. The holes here are a little bit smaller, too. They're small holes. They're not really that big. I'll transfer what was in here into this little sieve and show you how it works. You can see there's quite a bit of sauce on the bottom of your strainer. Now one tip I have for your strainer like this, don't ever let anything dry. It'll be really hard to get it out of these little holes. So as soon as you're finished with a strainer like this, just go ahead and rinse it out so that you don't have anything drying in the holes on your strainer. Now this little strainer, you just fill it up And just twist it around like this and it kind of pushes the applesauce on down through the sieve or the food meal I think this is technically a food meal and you can see on the bottom that it's coming down through there We'll just keep doing this until we just have just a very little bit of uh, skins, seeds, stems. And the applesauce will go on down through into our stainless steel pot. And we're just going to keep doing this. And then I'll rake out those stem seeds, and all that stuff and put them in a bowl and take them to the chickens when it's all said and done. Now I had an idea. I thought that these colander that I used would work just as good as that other strainer that I had and a colander that you wash your fruits and vegetables in would probably be something that you would have on hand more likely than you would have any kind of other specialized equipment so I just put this colander in here and I've just been pressing the applesauce through the holes and I noticed that the holes were small enough so that the uh, apple seeds or cores I mean the little stems it would not go through it so this would be an excellent alternative and something that probably more people would have on hand if they wanted to try this I also wanted to include that if you don't like the pro the thoughts of doing this this uh, straining part then choose the ulterior the ulterior the alternative method sorry can't talk this morning. Choose the alternative method of peeling and coring before you make your applesauce. 
if you don't want to uh, go through this long, it's kind of a process to strain out. But it's it doesn't really go as slow as you would think it would. It's uh, but it's kind of a more work on this end. I like to do this because I like to have the flavor and the nutrients that's up under the uh, peeling without having the peeling in there. So that's the reason I choose to do this to get the the good vitamins, flavor, and color that's up under the peeling. And I think it gets gives you the most apple. Uh, is the way that gives you the most. But this does not appeal to you doing this kind of strain. And you certainly can do the peeling, coring, and slicing before you put your apples in your big pot. This is just an old-fashioned way of doing it. Kind of like cold stone ice cream. Kind of like stone ground um, cornmeal. It's just an old-fashioned way that... Uh, uh, makes a little bit of difference if you if you know the difference, but if you don't, then this and you don't this does not appeal to the you. Then certainly go the easier route and do all your peeling in the beginning. This really doesn't take as long as you would think. It's not going to take you all day or anything, depending on how many apples you have. I had quite a bit of apples. There was a half a bush of apples in this pot cooking, cooked down to make this this much applesauce. But I had apples that I needed to put up, so this this is the way I do it. This is the way I usually do it. Just keep your uh, pulp moving. Keep it pressed through those holes. The applesauce is going down into a pot up underneath here. Just keep it moving. Keep it pressed through, and we'll be done in no time. Actually, this is all we have left. Now here's the pulp that's left out of that half a bush of apples that I boiled. There's probably still some more in here. And if I were doing the every bit counts challenge, I would get every bit of this out and make jam out of what's left in here. But today I'm doing the March Madness, the March Canning Madness yeah. video. So I am just going to concentrate on canning the apple salts that's coming out of here. Now this is uh, what we got to clean up. And plus these when I get this to the chickens. And over here is our apple sauce. Okay. Now it's a little bit runny because, you know, those apples have more juice in them than I thought. And I added a little bit of uh, much water. But that's okay because I'm just going to cook it down. It's got to come up to a boil anyway before I can it. So I can spend a little bit of time letting this boil and it'll thicken up some. Now, this is my sweet helper down here. Some people have noticed that I got a sweet helper, and she is peeking out down here. Madeline is at my feet a lot when I'm in here cooking or canning, so if you hear her, you'll know that's my little sweet granddaughter. That's our firstborn granddaughter. Donald and I have six grandchildren, and that is our firstborn, and she likes to come in here, in here and help Granny cook. She's helping me. She sings to me and talks to me. And so sometimes when I'm in here doing something, I'm not in here doing it by myself. I'm in here with my little sweet helper. Man, they carry our true greatness. She likes to be real close, so she just stays right down here at my feet. If I were to put her on a chair or anywhere else, she would just get down and get right there where she's at. She likes to be right there, and so I like to keep her happy and leave her right there. Whoops, I saw a little peeling. Got a little peeling slip through. Now I'm just going to cook this a little while until it thickens up. I'm going to clean up what I've got out over here, and then I'm going to go and wash my jars and get ready to can up this applesauce. Now here's our applesauce. It's cooked down to about this thickness. That's what we want because remember, we're going to use this applesauce for cooking. I'm going to use it for oil replacement. There's nothing in here but apples lemon juice, and a little bit of water. I haven't added any sugar because 
I don't want it real sweet. It's just going to basically be to replace oil in recipes. And I don't want to add a lot of other flavors or ingredients. So this is getting ready to go into jars. I've cooked it down. I've reduced it probably by about at least a third to get this thickness. And it'll be time to fill up our jars. Okay, our applesauce has cooked down to the way that we want it. You can see it's turned kind of brown because we've cooked it um, and reduced it down. And this is just plain, good old-fashioned applesauce. Nothing in here but apples, lemon, a little lemon juice, and water, just a little water, which we've cooked most of the water out. And now it's time to get our jars out of the oven and start filling them. Our jars are good and hot. Our applesauce is good and hot. And it's time to go ahead and start filling them. Now you can use a funnel to fill your jars if you'd like. You can see the texture of the applesauce. And it looks like we might have exactly six quarts. Now it's time to clean the jars up. Just wipe around them with a clean cloth. Make sure you have the rims really good and clean because you don't want anything to hinder the good contact between the lid and the rim. Now, after you've got all your rims wiped down, you can go ahead and put your lids on. We'll screw the bands on just finger tight. I 
why I am going to use the same pot that I cooked this applesauce in. I've washed it. I've got this little thing that I got from Amazon that goes on the bottom that'll turn this into a canner. And I'm just going to fill it up with a few inches of water, set my jars down in here. I'll bring this water up to a boil, and then when this water reaches a boil, I'll start counting for 20 minutes. We have to process these pint jars of applesauce for 20 minutes. So I'm just going to process three jars at a time. I'll keep these other jars right here warm. I'm going to set them in a 225 degree oven and uh, just leave them in there until I uh, until it's their turn to be processed. Got all the spillage and everything cleaned up. The jars cleaned up and ready to process. When your pot comes to a rolling bowl, just set your timer for 20 minutes. And let this process for 20 minutes. I like to keep the water over the tops of the jars. So I've got some woolen water in the back to add if it goes down. But this should be fine for 20 minutes. And then we'll do the other three jars. So our time has ended. It's time to get out our jars. We will put our other three jars in. And of course you can do this in one big can or so that you don't have to do several batches. But I have noticed as I've gotten older that I'd rather have deal with a smaller pot and a smaller batch than I had uh, those big huge canners. So we know this is good and boiling, so we're going to go ahead and put our timer. To 20 minutes. And we'll have our second little batch of three going. We'll let this cool down and see if it seals. Well, that's the end of our processing time. We can go ahead and get our last three quarts of applesauce out. Now I'll let these cool off and seal. And then I'll take this uh, rim off and wipe these jars down, label them with what's in here, and I'll have six jars of plain applesauce to use as oil substitute in my baking and in my recipes. Thank you for joining me today and let me share with you this old-fashioned uh, way of canning applesauce. Now remember if you do this recipe and you don't want to use it for an uh, oil substitute in your baking, uh, whenever you put this in your pot and get it ready to eat or even if you're going to eat it cold, Go ahead and add some sugar and some seasonings like cinnamon or uh, whatever you put in your applesauce because this is plain and it doesn't have any kind of um, flavors added to it. So if you're used to that and that's what you're looking forward to, then make sure you add that before you uh, heat it up or, or serve it. Thank you for joining me today. And like always, until next time.